All right, everyone, finally putting back the clutch assembly on my 1939 John Deere A. Um, the unique thing about the John Deere's is the clutch is all external to the tractor. Uh, this was one of their big selling points back in the day too because you could service it. Like you didn't have to take anything apart on the tractor. You didn't have to split it. You didn't have to like, yeah, you didn't need stands or anything to take something apart. It is right here. Um, so, and the, the earlier generation is even easier. Um, there's fewer parts in the clutch, so you have your first disc. Uh, I'm just going to reuse the discs that I had before. They seem to be working fine. Now, the uh, clutch driver. Uh, this is very important. Hopefully, some of you watched my timing video. Um, right here. Um, the clutch driver has to go on in a particular orientation. Um, typically, there is a arrow mark on the crankshaft, and typically a arrow mark on the um, clutch driver. This older style is a little bit different. There's a set screw here, and that goes on that spline right there, where it's cut a little short. On. Trying not to get in the way of the camera, so apologies. There we go. Hmm. All right, so that's on. And you have your big bolt on the end here. Um, I'm just going to leave that really loose for the moment until I tighten it. Um, and then we have the other clutch plate goes inside this piece here and then this goes on accordingly I can get things lined up oh, of course my springs fall off all right let's try that again spring came off again. It's funny, these springs are coming off when a lot of times they're on there so tight that you can't even get them off. Um, so there we go. Um, I will check that those are in place. And then Quite simply, you have washer on all of these bolts, or the, the studs, so to speak, and you've got a castle nut. And the important thing with the castle nut is, well, let me get this started, is you, there's two ways of going about this. You can adjust based on number of turns. So I got that started. Um, let me start this one on the bottom. You can you can go based on number of turns. Everything has to be even. All right, that one is just started. And let's do the top one. Or uh, you can do it. Some people do it based on torque. And I apologize, I do not have the number offhand of how much you torque them to. I, I want to say it's 10 foot pounds, but uh, if, if I put text in, then it's correct. Otherwise, uh, don't uh, don't go solely by that. So let's keep doing these evenly. You want to do them until you get a good tight snap. You do not want to just tighten them all the way down. So. Um, let me just go some iterations here and see what I get. All right, so I got it close here, so I'll show you a few fine adjustments. Uh, I did look it up. It is 10 foot-pounds, but honestly, 
I don't know, my uh, torque wrench may be too big to be uh, accurate at that very low torque, but uh, I had to keep backing them off um, because I couldn't even get it engaged. I just kept doing a half round. So I did torque them down to a, a similar spec, and then I turned from there. Originally, I was counting the turns, and I realized this stud here is actually maybe a sixteenth of an inch, uh, like back, than than these ones. These ones are pretty much to the lip or to the edge of the pulley. So if I'm counting number of turns and threads, that one is going to be, you know, a sixteenth of an inch further than the rest. Um, so you can see here, so I can engage it. It's, it's pretty good. Um, let me see if I go like a quarter turn and see what that gets me. So quarter, quarter, Ooh, that's pretty tight. That's you want a strong pull. I think they say like 30, 40 pounds of force. Um, I may just back it off just just a scotch. So what eighth of a turn? Actually, I'll have to stop and line up the uh, holes for the cotter pins. Uh, that one's lined up. Oops. Oh, a little too far. Uh, so I just put cotter pins in each of these. And uh, I did torque this down a minute ago. Uh, that's it. That's all there is to it for putting the uh, clutch back together. So uh, hopefully you can see why. John Deere was so big on it as a selling point. Um, like, I'll, so I'll put the cotter pins in, put the cover on, and then now I'll do it later is uh, set the crankshaft end play uh, for the flywheel. So I will just uh, put a link up in the corner, then I'll go ahead and put it in the description also uh, showing you how to set the crankshaft end play. I did a video on that on my G. Um, I think this one, because, um, well, I guess the G was really no different. It's a real pain in the butt um, when the bolts are on the inside of the flywheel like this one. So, um, yeah, I guess we'll wrap that up uh, for this video. Feel free to email me at danielfarmchannel at gmail.com if you guys have questions or leave them in the comments. Give me a thumbs up. Uh, hopefully another video or two here and we should have this thing at least trying to start I'll word it that way I'm not saying she will if I did everything right she will so you all right have a good day